What's up, my fellow parents? Hey, a few days ago, I posted a video on social media, which was entitled something like, how to respond to your kids whining and negativity. And the uh, little video I made has kind of exploded. There's probably over 2 million views on all these different platforms. And it really sent a message to me. The message was like, wow, like, Jordan, this is a huge issue. Like, this is an area that Parents need tools and support, and it kind of makes sense. And so here we are, we're coming to share some support, support, some stories on this very important topic that most of us are dealing with. Right, my, right, my man? No, no, no. Everybody. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, let's be real. If it's not your kids, it's your spouse whining at something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> or you or how about you how about you maybe you're the whining it was is more like me being the spouse whining to my spouse yep but yep me the reality too. is like i mean let's be honest Sean. i i can't wait and we we as a listener can't wait to get to the ask the family coach section because it's like i don't oh, know what it is about these kids whining you. so dang much it's driving me it crazy really right now all i do is i say stop whining you're being so annoying and then they start yeah. crying you said oh I'm yes I'm like no you're being annoying stop whining right so i need help i need we, help. we need all help. do yeah i just I, i'm happy to say a few things i want to share is you're going to get some great tools that you're going to use with your kids to address whining second thing i want to share is just a word of thank you when i look at the charts the top charts jordan um for parenting i see some amazing podcasters on there and i see here we are we've been sitting number five here for a few weeks it's just shocking i don't know what it what's happening of how we are up there with these amazing podcasts but so thank you so much for all you moms and dads um who are listening to us or supporting this and let's have some fun and let's go deep because jordan i'm gonna i'm gonna do something a little interesting here in this podcast what you don't need to answer this question it's like a rhetorical question i'm going to share some illustrations some teaching some stats and one of the things i'm going to do on this podcast i'm going to tell you what does married sex have to do with kids freaking whining and being negative what does married Wait, sex what? i know i'm going to make i'm going to try i'm going to try to be a while i'm going to try to has to do with how the kids yeah, are whining i know i'm going to make a dope example illustration that i think it's going to be life-changing for everyone who's listening. i'm going to oh try okay. i'm going to try all, all i right. know is that if you if you've listened to this podcast before you know that uh even though i might show up to this amazing <laughs> apparent on these social media videos i have right horrible days i have my mistakes and one of the things that really drives me nuts is if I'm on a camping trip, you 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 want to see the opposite of the family coach. You want to see me act like a bozo or a big dummy. Like if you if you saw me, you should y'all y'all should come camping with me sometime. And can you for, at least have a video of you freaking out one time? Show some of I the should. Don flaws because I want we want to see it. Okay, yeah, I, okay, okay. I'll try. I'll try. Because when you, you, no, wanna you see want to see nothing more, you want nothing more when you're heated to have your kids come up and film you. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Daddy, let me see your real side. <laughs> oh, well, you'll see my real side if we're on a camping trip. And I'm like, all right, guys, it's time to clean up, everybody. Mm -hmm. And my kids are whining. They're dragging their feet. They're moping. Like, it's I don't been know a, how. It's caused problems. How, it won't fit. The sleeping bag won't fit. I don't know how to do <sighs> it. Tired. I can't do it. This is annoying. They're not uh -huh. cleaning. I need to take a right. break. I didn't, I didn't sleep good chair. last night. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Uh, I mean, uh, so Jordan, I actually knew, knew you when you were kind of a kid, young adult. And we've camped together, and I don't remember you being harsh camping, mm. but I do remember there were times okay. when you could see Sean Don snapped. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's going to be lecture mode. And you never got to the point where it was lecture like, mode. like a scary Sean Don, but it was like, mm. oh, no, this is the real, oh. he's going to get in our face, yeah. and he's going to... You know, try and figure out what 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 what's what's going wrong from us because well, we sometimes were just kids, maybe we were just trying to have fun. Yeah, man, you were in high school when I met you, and maybe I was being moody, maybe I was being lame, but there were some times no. that happened that there was some legit stupid stuff that you and yes. your buddies were doing. Like I don't yes. know, I don't know if this is appropriate to share, but uh, on one trip, some surf trip down to Baja, Mexico, two of your quote friends they decided to do some weird prank. And these freaking teenage dudes, so dumb. This is like teenage dudes are so dumb sometimes. They're so dumb. So dumb. They took a poop. All the time. They took a poop <laughs> on a plate. On a plate. Oh, and they thought it was funny, Jordan. Jordan. To put that plate in one of the girls' hotel rooms. 
that they were hoping the girls would step on and then put poop oh over. I think any teenage girl likes that. So that did I lose so my stupid. temper then? Do you remember? Was I cool that cucumber so then? Did, or did it bring out the heat? And then they're whining that they got to clean it up or uh, don't that so dumb, dude. Teenage oh boys. my gosh, dude. That is so funny. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember that story. It's hard for me to find that memory in my lockbox. I remember we, we already talked about this, starting a fire in Big Bear. And you oh, flipped. so dumb. These stupid we, teenagers, so everyone. Dumb. They're playing with fire and lighter fluid in California. And they're lighting a line of fire and they're dancing around it like, like they're living and on it. It could have been really I bad. was raging, dude. I was so pissed. I was in like an Airbnb, too. That was like a leadership you, retreat. So good. That was the, that was so the best good. of the best are lighting then, fires. But, but, but the reality is what you did is kind of what you're teaching us now. And you didn't even really know it at the time, but you never got physical. You never la- yelled too much. You, you you yelled to get us back inside, to put it out. And then you really, we spent like, I remember two hours yeah. going through the process as to why we're doing what we're long doing. Long meeting. Us down. Was I, long meeting. I was so pissed. I was scared too that I was going to get in trouble. How about you? When you think about your lovely kids, they're nine, they're probably about 10. Then you got Kinlan who's four. Uh, is there one area of your life when like, they're whining or one version of a whine or a style of whining. And when it just gets under your skin, it's like you it brings out the beast. There's a lot. I mean, there's times when I threatened to pull the car over. I was just listening to a family this week. They, their kids were driving them so nuts in the car uh-huh. that they pulled up to the police station and said, get out. <laughs> no, they did. <laughs> yes, they did. Oh, they, they did it. Oh, and it whipped Dude, those kids into shape. They're like, this is the police station. You get out and check yourself. In oh, right my. How old are the kids? How, I just, how they're, old are the kids? Uh, they're seven and Dude. like five. Are you going to tell them you shared that story on our podcast? Oh, I told him. No, I no, I, I told my kids. I'm like, hey, listen, this is what so-and-so <laughs> did. If you guys don't shape up, I'm going to drop you off. I'll like, share. Yeah, I'm going to drop you times, off. You get in. There are times when I see like family, and I feel bad by for thinking <laughs> this, but like families, right? Like yeah. will get in like this car accident where they drive mm-hmm. off a cliff. And there are times when my kids are screaming in the back. So it distracts me from driving. And I'm like, I cannot. Yes. And that's when I lose my cool. Oh I yeah. Yes. That and is so common. Yeah. I've got some weird stories about that myself. Please tell that, that family that you told their private story on a <laughs> global podcast that has listeners all around the world. And so I'm going to give you some guys, some do's and don'ts to how to respond to the kids whining and negativity. We're mostly going to concentrate on the do's because the don'ts are not very, uh, we shouldn't spend that much time. We might end up laughing at the don'ts if I role play them out. So here's I want to hear the do's because there's going to be a lot of don'ts that I'm probably doing. Well, we're all, we all, here's the thing. I think we all like, we either do them or we visualize them in our head like thinking about doing them and then we have self-control to not do them. So I think it's all of us like are dealing with these dark thoughts of how do we respond? you know, when our kids are shaming or I mean our negativity and uh, whining, no, that's why I said the word shaming right there, because that's a very common thing we do. We say, we shame, we shame them. We say, stop. What are you doing? Yeah. What you're right. You're, you're being whiny. You're acting like a little yeah. baby. Are you a baby? You want me to treat you like right. a baby? How old are you? Yeah, how old That's are you? exactly you, right. People aren't going to like you if you do this. You're being dumb. This is so annoying. You're annoying. I'm just studying. Shut up. See how that's just this form of shame, aggression, aggression, passive yeah. aggression. I mean, and we don't need to get into that, but I mean, you do a lot of that. It's going to well, cause I mean, some problems. There's been times when I've done that and then I take a second and I can see the reaction and I have to stop and lo- 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 cool my, my jets. Yeah. And be like, listen, I'm sorry I reacted that way, yeah. but I do not like it. When That's you loving. This. Yeah. That's a loving. Because it's like you tell them to do something or they ask for something. You say, no, not right now. And, and one of the worst things I hate to hear is this. Aww. That's not fair. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, that's crazy. it. It's so common. What is fair? What do you mean right. it's not fair? You're trying to say, what is fair? Tell me what's fair, and then I'll tell you whether it's fair. <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> so you go into judge mode. That's like judge yes, mode. I'm the judge. Okay, I'm that's the judge, exactly right. the jury. Yeah, some parents, they go into lecture mode. Let me tell you chapter one about why this right. is so ridiculous. Some parents, they go into command and control role. Nope, nope, you're whining. You know, go sit down over there. Just sit down. No, go do this right now. And so we'll talk about why we do this. We'll we'll also talk briefly about some of the 
damage we do when we do a lot of this, not to bring up the mom guilt or the dad guilt, but I want to motivate you to replace that tool with something healthier. Because guys, this is a parenting tool, shaming your kids, scolding them, lecturing them, yelling at them. These are parenting tools that we do to, to try to make our lives better, to try to bring calm in the chaos and to try to raise good kids. These are parenting right. tools. People don't normally refer to like crappy negative stuff as tools, do they, Jordan? But they are. They're tools that parents use every day. Wait, and the, but the reality is, too, it takes it's taken us as parents a long time to craft these tools and try to get them sharpen these tools. But and the, the reality is, we're still working on that. Yeah. So the the double edged sword here is we kind of want our kids to automatically know this stuff, yeah. and when they don't, we get all frustrated. Yeah. But we were in the same place at one time. We were, but. It's hard. Like there's this funny Instagram video right now yeah. and it's this kid saying, Hey guy, he's like six. Okay. He's like, Hey guys, I'm going to teach you how to get what you want from your parents. Mm. And he's like, instead of doing this, and it'd be a video of like, Hey dad, can you go jump on the trampoline with me? And the dad's like, no, son, I can't do it right now. I'm busy. He, and it comes back to the kid and he's like, why don't you try this? Hey dad, I really love spending time with you and I just love playing. Would you mind spending five minutes to jump on the trampoline with me? Of course every dad's <laughs> gonna say yes. Like yes, of course. Yeah. And so it's like yeah. these kids are whining, but it's right. they don't know how they don't know to how. come to us. They yet. don't, they know, don't how. know how. They've never taken a class uh, any of these things. And parents are teachers in every homes or school, and we're gonna help you replace these negative tools with something positive. But you know what? A lot of parents they don't yell and they don't snap. They don't lecture, but they go the other extreme in a negative way. Jordan, they, they, the kids are whining and what do they do? They appease them. They people please them. They give them what they want. It, oh, there is a lot of that right now. There's a, there's so much of that kind of parenting right and now. And we're going to talk about why that, why that is in a minute too, but that is a huge issue with our generation of parents. My man, we have a lot yeah. of people pleasing parents. Which right. then creates whining because we're always teaching people how we want to be treated. So you cave to your kid, you whine to them, you give them that extra treat or that stupid food or that extra screen time. And every time you do that, you're sending a message that this works for me. You can treat me this way. I will respond to your whining. You want to speak English to me? Go ahead. You want to speak a language called whining and negativity? Go ahead. I speak both right. languages. I'm bilingual, right? right? right. And, then, right. and then you just screwed yourself. And that is super common. So the reality is it's not just kids that whine. Adults whine all the time too. But Ooh, more important yeah. as to what age it is yeah. when you whine, why do we whine? Oh. Why are the kids whining? Why are we whining? Let's go why deep. do we always Ask complain? yourself, everybody. Ask yourself deeply. Why do you whine? Why do your kids whine? I'm going to give you some answers. That's a great question. We I think it's because you, you want something mm -hmm. and you're not getting That's it. That's true. That's one of the true so reasons. That, go deeper though. That's true. But so like, let's say, let's say you're an adult mm -hmm. and you work at a place that's minimum wage and you don't get a raise. Mm -hmm. You're going to whine. Yeah. Well, yeah. why don't I get this? Yeah. It's, it's when you don't get what you want. Yep. Right. But who do you whine to? And where's the fine line between whining versus just sharing negative feelings with your loved ones? These are all questions that every parent needs to answer as because parents are teachers, never homes a school. The more you can clarify this in your own mind, the better you can teach it. And so here's uh, a quote. I think, go I th okay, go ahead. Well, no, go for it. Well, here's a quote um, that I got from this thing that's called Adlerin Psychology, which asserts that all humans are hardwired, hardwired with two basic emotional needs, belonging and significance. Okay, what, what does that yes. have to do with whining? Well, one of the crucial ways parents can meet a child's need for belonging is to give sufficient amounts of attention to that child. Okay, that makes sense. But some you parents are still very them. confused, though, because they're with their kids all today because they're a stay-at-home parent, and the kids are whining, whining, whining. So it's like, don't worry, I'm going to give you some ideas for that, too. Well, researchers have found that people tune in more to whining than to natural speech or crying. Isn't that interesting right there? That's probably because we're emotional beings, mm. right? If someone comes to you and says, Sean, this really disturbed me. Wow. Can we talk about it? You can be like, oh, sure. Uh, give me a couple minutes. But if someone comes to you crying. That's good. And saying, hey, I, oh, I, I, that's I, good. something bad. You're going to immediately get them your attention. Oh, that's good. 
Uh, it's really, uh, let's, I want to chat about that too. So yeah, there's a, from psychology.com, there's a quote. I'll read another quote l- later from psychology today. They were saying, kids don't whine to intentionally irritate us. They whine because they haven't learned a positive, productive way to get our attention or to have their needs met. Kind of like what you just right. said. Greeks it's like, said. this is the English language they're learning. And they are now trying to learn the emotional language of getting their needs met and they need a parent's help. And so a couple ways of looking at this, if you have a whiny kid in your house, essentially here's a couple things that could be helpful. One way to look at it is look, I have a child that needs extra attention on getting some these new tools, whether they're three or they're 13 or somewhere in between. And what they could also say, instead of labeling that kid or scolding them or shaming them, say, look, I need to spend more time with this kid. I need to improve my teaching because they might, their, their whining patterns might actually be a reflection of your poor teaching or your failure as a teacher. That's a strong word. Yeah. And I think it's important for us to remember that like our household can be the way we want it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I was just going to say, listen, Look at what we are as a country. Mm. We whine to try and get our way. Yeah. Something's wrong. Right. We whine loud enough, no. and then eventually something's <sighs> going to change. But unfortunately, it's just, we allow this whining to take place rather than taking a more logical and adult approach. That's really good. Which we need to do in our household. You know, you could, you could even make the argument that whether you're watching CNN or Fox News, news you're actually what you have on the screen in front of you is these very smart very articulate whiners, whiners. and they've <laughs> learned exactly to whine. Right. I'm just saying what you just said, because I never thought about yes. that. Learn how to whine yes, and point out negativity in a very creative, Correct. edgy way that inspires people to like whine with them or to get irate with them and the cause that they're like preaching about. Like even if you have, um, let's say a political party that's doing some good, yeah. okay? The other party is going to whine no matter what, yeah. even if it's good, they're going to find every little thing to whine about. It's like we promote whining. Why are we, you know, clicking on the headline that's negative and whine, more whining based? It's because I don't know why we're drawn to it, but it, it's almost like we have a a, a wall yeah. uh, in between, let's say, us and another person, um, and, and there's disconnect there when it comes to communication. Because uh-huh. since we are emotional beings, we have to use those That's emotions good. to get someone's attention yes. rather than just use words. Um, I just picked up my pen and I made a little list. As we go through this, I'm going to make a list of all the reasons why humans whine. And right now I'm up to two and I want to add the third one down. Okay. When, you're, when your child okay. was a baby, they whined, they cried. Because that's what humans do. That's a natural thing. They don't know English. They can't speak. And so what good parents do is they hear the whining and they pick their child up and they change a diaper. They hold them. Right. They, they give them eye attention. You know, they nurture them. They coddle them. And what you do by sending a message is by doing that, you're sending a message like, hey, anytime you're in need, just call out for help. And you can trust yeah, me. I will be there. I'm here. You can, you can attach to me. So it's, this is, and then what happens is our kids start reach a certain age and they're still doing it. And now they're getting in trouble for it, which is kind of messed up. Like, no, they need to like, kind of like how we talked about rites of passage last week. We need to help them understand that this is a natural, normal, good thing to do. It's all part of what we all done for the history of humanity, but we need to usher them through into more adult like or age appropriate like ways of getting their needs met. So we got three ways right now of why do people whine? They're not getting their needs met. Two, they have no tools, no good healthy tools of getting their needs met, like we talked about. And three, it's just in human nature. Now, here's something else in human nature having sex, having married sex. Good okay, here we married go. here dude. I just I, I'm waiting for this. Don't one. you just love good married sex? Like no one talks about I mean, who that, does dude. It? I do. Who does? I do. It? I think about it right now, man. I think about it all the time. Not with you, <laughs> but with my special lady, Danielle. <laughs> like you know what? Hollywood is always talking about that hookup sex or you know right. makeup sex, drunk sex, uh-huh. unprotected uh-huh. sex. You know, crazy sex, perverted sex, weird sex, sex on the first date. But you know what I'm going to talk about? I'm talking about that married sex. You know that you've been married for 20 years and you just like, you just feel safe and you know how to get her done and get it done. And it's just fun. And 
you know what the best sex is though i gotta whisper here because i have a home office dude hotel sex that's the best if you're married <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about hotel sex? Uh, am I am I being, I am think, I being pervy right now? I think or? two things. Yeah. I think one, it can be great, but then two, I immediately think, how many other people have done this? <laughs> oh, not me, dude. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Okay, not now. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to P- let's bring it let's back, bring how it back are to you PG. Linking this. Okay, okay. Let's say that you were. Oh, because you like that when they whine when you're having sex. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what you're saying? No, no I'm not saying that. And I'm not circle? saying my oh. wife whines after sex. I'm not saying that either, dude. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know. I'm they trying to guess. What are you me trying now. to say? Okay, let's <laughs> imagine that you're a married man and you want to have sex with your wife because you like her, you like her body, and you're it's a pretty typical thing for a married man to want to have regular sex with his wife. You with me? Yeah, you just put it on the calendar. We'll do it every yeah. Thursday for <laughs> wherever you want to get it done. There's a lot of creative ways yeah. to have married sex. But let's okay. say that you uh, you really you know you want to have sex and you're not okay. you're not getting it because she, she's not in the okay. mood she doesn't want to right. she's making up excuses how are most now we're we're just so everybody knows we are talking about this from a guy's perspective so all the ladies out here like yeah we probably are listening to us like oh, we are right. yes which is I don't have the research in front of me but yeah it's pretty typical that not every man married man wants sex more than his wife uh, sometimes it's flipped some, sometimes it's equal sometimes but let's just say hypothetically you're a married man and you like to have regular sex with your wife and she's not giving you regular sex she's not meeting you how do you how are you going to handle it? how are you going to feel about that well i think that happens in a lot of couples mm-hmm. and it causes um stress yeah, dude. it causes anxiety it causes problems in the marriage it causes the lack of love you feel for one yeah. another especially from a guy's perspective yeah. Um, which then can ultimately lead to counseling. And then it gets awkward. You talk to the counselor about it. How do we do this? And there's a classic scene from it's either analyze this or analyze that. And it, have you seen that movie? With, uh, are we talking Adam Sandler and uh, with Billy Crystal? Billy- no, Anna- oh, Billy Crystal, Billy Crystal and um, oh, Billy Chris- yeah. uh, Robert De Niro. Oh, okay. And I like those movies. I like when, those movies when yeah. he's just like, she, you know, and then at the end of the movie, he, he realizes life's too short and he's like, just do it. Go have fun. <laughs> take the paintings off the walls, get crazy. You know what I mean? And he's all, the guy's all smiling, but you know, that was a therapy session. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that don't go to therapy and they don't know how to talk to their spouse. No, they don't. They don't talk about sex or why they are struggling with sex. They don't do the work. Yeah. And then ultimately maybe they go find someone else. Oh yeah. Then it creates different issues and and resentment. And so, yeah, before resentment sinks in, I, I have to imagine because you know that it's going to be hard for this. We'll just call it a man in this scenario, but it could be for you know a woman. She's going to start feeling kind of negative and might let's say he's trying to be like, "Hey, can we have sex tonight?" In their own you know specific way, and the and the, right. the wife says, "No, I don't really feel like it." And then he's going to say something like, "Oh, it's been it's been so long," and sure. then the wife's going to say, "What? What could she say to that?" It's, "Come on, honey, it's been a long time." And then what would a wife maybe say? Um, I know, but it's not tonight. I'm right. Exhausted. Totally typical. Or, uh, and then he's going to say, but yeah. well, when, you know, tomorrow or the next day, like when, what, what, what is she going to say then? Um, yeah, let's see how I'm feeling. And then he's going to say what? Right. I'm totally tracking with you. I like, how I'm just putting you on. Sp- and then he's going to say, <laughs> no, you're, I'll just, I'll be him. You be her. It. I'll be like, okay. well, I, okay. Ah, oh, it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just been a long time. And like, I just, yeah. It's like, okay, t- you know, tomorrow we'll see how Well, then it's tomorrow. just hard. I just keep asking. And then, I mean, I'm feeling rejected. And like, it's just, what if you don't want to tomorrow? I'm just really, this is really, you know, really hard for me. So I'm trying to think of it from a girl's perspective where she is, you know, when you look at masculinity, feminine, femininity, femininity, um, you've got, you know, the feminine side that really wants that love and yeah, affection, yeah. right? And they really want to feel that love yeah. and affection. So ultimately, maybe the spouse would say, well, I'm not feeling any love from mm-hmm. you. So until I mm-hmm. get that, you're not mm-hmm. getting this. Right. And I'm looking at it from a male's point of view because I don't know if you noticed this, but I was actually just whining right there. Did you notice that? That was a... Oh, you were I right. was whining. You were whining. Were you whining? I think I was whining. Yeah, we got to separate the between whining and stating facts. I, I think I was kind of whining, whining right there. Like I was trying to mimic a child whining child who wants trying to get candy, candy or wants something. Want, Why? Yes. What about, you know, it's been a long time. When? I didn't use a childish voice. I used a masculine voice. But right. 
So let's just take a shovel and go deep for a second. Okay. From a man's point of view. Because you're not getting what you want. You're He's not, not getting, getting what, what you want. So you're whining. Right. So let's go deeper for a second. One thing I've I always try to train the parents who work with me in my VIP membership, which is such an incredible experience, life changing. I hope you guys can join me in it. Is to to view, you know, family life is it's never about what it's about. It's never about what's about. And right now, on the surface, it seems like this conversation about, you know, lovemaking in a marriage, but it's kind of deeper than that. One thing I think is going on here is the lack of trust in this marriage relationship. The do you think that the husband in this role playing we just did impromptu, do you think he trusts her to give him sex or to meet his tomorrow. needs tomorrow? Do you think tomorrow. that he trusts based on what we just did? Do you think there's a lot right. of trust in his did you hear trust in his tone in his heart? Not if he's whining. I don't really hear trust either. I don't think right. he trusts her. Or he's just fogged by his need and his desire. Hey, he wants it. <laughs> that he's just like, I don't care when we're. He doing wants it to now. get some. He, he loves his wife. He right? loves her body. He wants to have right. sex. He wants to be intimate right. with her. Right. So trust could be the ultimate. Well, maybe for him. So what would it be for her? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking at it from her point of view in this. That's too complicated. I can't only handle one. <laughs> it's too I'm just I saying, know, yeah, I like. I don't know why she's not giving herself to her husband. I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about. I think it's a connection issue. I think it's, um, you know, you got to feel very close. Mm -hmm. You got to feel right. it's like, it's weird with guys. They think it's like they can, you know, this term hit it and quit it. Like, like <laughs> this. You know what I mean? I mean, they yeah, talk about it yeah, in songs. It's like you go in yeah, and she you doesn't... move on instantaneously yeah. after. It's in every movie, right? Get The guy gets up from bed and leaves. Yeah, man. And it's just like that's not the same, and it shouldn't be that way. Right. Maybe she doesn't trust him. Which is why it's important you're talking about Maybe she doesn't trust sex, him to right? meet Rather her than... needs or to be loving, caring, gentle, Correct. teamwork. And maybe right. they're just missing each other. I just know that – let's say that uh, – I'm going to make a parenting point about sex, marriage, sex. And I, I'm about to try to, like I told you, I was going to do at the beginning of this. I'm going to try to make what I think is a really important point. Now let's do that role playing again. But this time I'm going to come to the point of view where I totally trust my wife, who that's going to be you, to be able to like, it's not a big deal if you don't want to have sex with me tonight, even tomorrow night, because I trust you, honey. I trust that we are going to be making love soon. And watch how my tone is not going to be whiny. Can we do it? Can we do take two? Yeah, okay. yeah, try it. Okay. Try take two. Jordan and I are really good friends, right? I just put them on the spot. And no <laughs> warning. You're going like to pretend to be a woman. <laughs> We're going to talk about having sex together, dude. Like, I love you, man. Good, good times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good times. <laughs> um, hey, um, uh, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to try to be serious. I'm not going to say anything like, uh, can we, can we have sex tonight? That's your cue. I know. And I'm thinking of how. Never, you're going to say no. You're not having it. sex. Yeah. I know. I understand. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to be I know. I know. This is kind of awkward. I can't make eye contact with Jordan right now on the, on the, <laughs> on the Zoom screen. I'm looking away. <laughs> um, My wife's going to come in babe, and be like, who are you talking babe, to? You? This is what this is. Yeah. Babe, not tonight. I am just exhausted. Oh, come on. Come on, girl. Let me let me feel that body. <laughs> let, me, let me feel that body. Come on, I mean, it's been a long time. Like, I, listen, I am. Can we let's maybe tomorrow? Let me see how I'm feeling right. tomorrow. I yeah, just, hey, I, you're my girl. The kids go down. I'm oh, dude, soft. you're a great mom, and you got a nice booty, and I can wait. I can wait. It's all good. All good. You're my girl. You want you want a back massage, or you want me to tickle tickle your arm? Yeah, really? yeah. Yeah, All right. See the great. difference there. Why didn't I whine? Focus on me for a second. Why didn't I whine? Because you are trying. Well, first off, you mm -hmm. love her, right? You can understand where she's coming from. Yeah. She is probably exhausted. She yeah. had a long day, and you probably yeah. did too. But she's not right there. So instead of being whiny, mm -hmm. you want to be supportive, husband. Right. You be so isn't it kind of deep that I believe the. Fourth reason, I'm just making this up on the spot with my pen in my right hand right now, is one of the reasons why humans lie. I'm sorry. Humans whine is because they're 
the relationship lacks trust. They actually do not trust that the person is really going to care for them and meet their needs eventually. And when they don't have that trust, then there's fear built out. And then it just comes off more whining because it's like a grasp for attention. It's like a begging. I need to be able to trust you. Are you going to be there for me? What do you think about that? The real question is, Sean, would you offer to give her a back rub, a massage, or tell her she has a nice booty if you weren't trying to get something? <laughs> I don't know if I should <laughs> laugh at that or cry. I don't know if you change the subjects right now. Yes, I think that no, I think that you're like being serious. You were giving a compliment. It's like, are you leading her mm. into being like, you know, I gotta like, are you just doing I think it that, to get the ice right. cream at the end I of the party? I think that my response is that in this role playing and in my own private marriage, and I think in hopefully all marriages, is that you would hope that your spouse can you, trust you. That when you get right. physical and intimate, it's not just about intercourse; it's about just touching. Right. And, patience and hugs and positive love languages yeah. type stuff. Right. Cause that would be, well, that's one of the love languages yeah. is the power of touch. Right. right. So just snuggle. And so, and, and talk hands. about if, if, uh, if, uh, the husband in this metaphor does respond that way, wouldn't that build trust with his wife that she can trust him to not guilt her, to not shame her, to not get weird, right. to not snap at her, right. but now serve her. He, she's actually being served by her husband versus her, her serving her yeah. husband or them serving each other. That sounds very loving, right? It really does. So if I'm trying to bring this back full circle, you were whining, but you're doing something that's not, you're being a supportive husband. You're saying adults can do it. Can, we, we can understand this now. But when I link it back to children mm -hmm. that are whining, how am I, I think, supposed to be reacting here's in a tool. that situation? Here's a tool right now. Hey, um, we could do some, we'll do some role playing if you're down to. Here's a tool. Hey, um, I know it's really hard for you. You don't get this one thing. And let's just, I'll just pretend like I'm talking to a 12 year old. You know, I know it's really tough. Yeah. I know. Hey, you can trust me. You can trust me though that uh, when you get older, you can have that or take two. Hey, I know it's really tough. Yeah. I know you want it. But uh, what else can I do for you? Anything that's important to you? Nothing. Yeah. They'd say nothing. All right. Really, yeah. Well, like, you know what? There is really want because. It. It's I things are important to you or important to me. And I know this meant a lot to you. And I want you to know you can come to me. And I can't always give you these things that you want, but you can trust me to hear you out and to try to, you know, be there for you. You can trust me. Okay, so you're still be I like it. You're still being that supportive father mm -hmm. in this picture and encouraging, even though they can't. Let's go take more. three. Take three. Let's go with six year old. Hey, I really, I'm really listening to you. I know it's really important to you that you want this thing, but you don't have to talk to me like that. You can just tell me, you know, tell me using your regular voice, not like a whiny voice. And you can really trust me to hear you and to listen and try to work with you. Okay. So can we try again? Just talk to me in a non whiny voice, right? I'm here. I'm here. You can trust me. You don't have to use that voice to get my attention because some super smart person that I'm looking at right now taught me 20 minutes ago that uh they use a whiny voice because it gets attention that's you right you're the one who taught me that that's right that really oh yeah no sense. i mean it gets so, attention but and and i know this will work with time right doing these practices using the words trust like you've taught us in previous podcasts is very important and over time this can be very very successful but and you're still going to give us some tips on what we can do but my question is what if you get into that situation where they are just freaking out stomping and screaming and whining what do oh, we do okay Sean? okay what do we do all right so here we go ask the family coach i got some good action steps for you guys and i want to teach you by telling you two personal stories and hopefully Jordan will get a okay. we'll, we'll get a story or two out of Jordan. One story that happened to me just last night at the at the mini golf course. We went there with some friends. <laughs> and the went, how do, wait, how'd you do uh, that? Oh, a few, one? but we actually did something fun. We we went up with uh, these dear family friends who we love. And at the PF Changs, I was like, "Hey guys, I got an idea. How about everybody putting a dollar <laughs> into the pot, and we'll keep score, and the yeah. winner gets the whole pot because we had a bunch of teenagers and nice. some tweens." 
and we it was mostly fun uh you know i as soon as a little bit sometimes people got a little bit too competitive at times and it was a little sour you mean no you not me no i decided <laughs> i decided right away like i'm gonna try to not win okay because i don't want to like right. i don't care about winning i just want everyone right. else to have a good time right. all right because i all right yeah. and i didn't win even though i actually did try to win but thankfully I did. did. I did, but I was playing so bad. I was like, well, I'm playing so bad, so it's my, my plan is going. I sucked. And then I got hot on the back line. Anyways, let's go back to you. All right, here's the first thing. And I want to I want to get a tractor out, and I want to go deep on the first thing because on the surface, the first thing is not that deep. So here we are. Ask the family coach. Let me give you some steps how to respond to your kids whining and negativity. Your first step is to take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Remember that term? Oh, yeah. Do yes. you use it anymore? Take a chill pill. Well, of course I do. You've taught us like take steam, take a walk, take five minutes. If you're heated, just take a second for you before you react. But, so, all right, yes, let's go I deeper. What do we do in this and chill pill though? A lot. We've talked a lot on these podcasts. We're supposed about, to do self-talk. Yeah, buddy. Self-talk. Yes. yes. And we do a lot of good things with this while we're, when we're sucking on that Why chill are we pill reacting this way. Why are we so mad mm-hmm. wet that they're whining? What, mm-hmm. what is coming yeah. up in us? That's making me want to throw this book. So do it, do it right now. Do it right now. What comes up for you? Put you on the spot. Okay, All right. Pretend breath, you're on the, uh, breath, some psychologist couch me, and I'll come up. I'll do it the same. And I'm going to get deep for everybody here. I'm going to get very deep in a second. So you're asking me to do yeah, my, like, I don't know what comes up for you, dude. Oh yeah. Like, so I, I walk away and I'm just like, I was at that age one time. I wanted the exact same thing that they wanted. Gosh, those kids can be so frustrating. Why are they just whining all that dang time? Nope, Jordan, it's yeah. okay. We just need to go to their level and figure out what's bothering them and try to get to the root of the of the problem. Give me a few minutes and let me go in. Let them know I love them. Let me know that they mm-hmm. can trust me That's good. and that we will so good. move forward. With it. And then, of course, when I do that, it fires up yet again the second mm-hmm. time around. But yeah. anyway, over time. I think work. it will. And, and sometimes there's parents here that are really trying to use positive parenting or gentle parenting principles and they just start getting stuck because they're missing a piece of the pie here. So if that's you and you feel like you're getting stuck with a lot of these principles, I can show you the pie, the piece that you're probably missing, but that's good. So I want to give more people options of things of uh, really positive places they can go when they're taking that chill and that pill and they're chilling on the pill. And I want to kind of go deep for a second about things we can say to ourselves when we're in that pill place. You, you, is that cool with you? All right. Yeah. I mean, when I chill on the pill, I'm usually on the pill. <laughs> so it's really nice. To just get it all. I right actually there. have a physical representation of a chill pill. It's a blow pop for some reason. I don't know why. Because uh-huh. it takes I just, a while. I like blow pops. Sometimes when I golf, I'll bring a blow yeah. pop because it helps me to just kind of simmer down and be chill. Do you like blow pops? Yeah. Uh, I haven't had one since I was 12, <laughs> okay. but yeah. <laughs> So here is uh let's get deep for a second. Okay. I think that uh, something I've learned is that when I posted this media, this video on all these social media platforms, you know what the number one comment was by far, it said something like this. My kids whining is my number one trigger. Yeah. Ooh, a lot of us. Can it makes me way. wonder. I, I do not why, like though? whining. Why of all the triggers in the world, why is that someone such a big trigger? Why does a child acting like a child doing human behavioral things that we all do whining? Why does that trigger people? I'm going to tell you my theory on it. What's on your mind? So this, this is my theory. My theory is because we have, let's say 20, 30 plus years of more experience than this child. We have done so much for this family, to give them a roof over the head, to go to practice every single week, to do everything for them. They have everything they could ever want. They live in an age where they have technology, their fingertips, knowledge at their fingertips. They're on playing video games. They have friends. They're having a great time. And they whine saying mm-hmm, they're bored. Mm-hmm. And they that yeah, triggers so many of us because if they could just right. go back in time and live when you lived, or if we can go back in time and lived when our grandparents yeah. lived, we would yeah, be buddy. bored all the time. But but we're in this age where mm-hmm. boredom is mm-hmm. instantaneous. It's the craziest thing, and it just drives I us like nuts. it. That's my theory. Let's stay on that same train of thought with the word trigger. I have Right now, I have a list that I've been writing down of why do people whine, and I have a fifth reason what I want to go into. I think 
our kids whining for many of us. I'm not talking about a few of us. Just, just like roll with me for a minute. If you disagree, just like help me flesh this okay. out to our listeners. I think it triggers right. our unhealed childhood traumas. All right. Can I tell you what I'm thinking? Okay. Yes. I think that um, people think like, oh, there's a valid reason why my kids whining and negativity bothers me because it's just annoying because it annoys everybody. Ha ha ha. Let's laugh. I think that's true. But I think for many people, it actually goes way deeper to that. It goes into their childhood and some things that are happened to them, bad things that happened between them and their parents. And it caused trauma in their life and it's not healed. And now it's brought into their parents uh, they're now parents and be, and one of the symptoms of the unhealed trauma is how highly triggered and re reacted reactive they get when their children act like children and they do normal things that children do like whine and complain. I got some illustrations for yeah, this. And that makes sense. Okay. okay ask me questions what, to help me teach this. I've never taught on this before and I want to make sure I so, do it well and I need your help. My, I was first going to rebuttal this and be like, okay, just hang with me for a second before you rebuttal. Reality is, yeah, hang that big to, butt to the I side. Keep the butt process. to the side. No butts. I changed my yeah. thought process. Already. And already. I, the reason I huh. changed my thought process hmm. already is because a childhood trauma doesn't necessarily mean I went through trauma as a child. What it what it does to me is it's, it, it – you're using the term childhood trauma, but maybe through my childhood, through my tweens – you know, teenage years, adult years, I made sacrifices to make the smart decisions yeah, to do yeah, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so I, let's say yeah. you're a firstborn child and you were, you know, you know, more of a go-getter and you had right. to take care of your siblings and you went to mm -hmm. college and you did all this stuff. And then you hear your mm -hmm. kids whining about, and they're not taking those same actions that you did. So there's the childhood yeah. trauma, I think, even though it's, yeah. it's different, right? But it's like, do you, why aren't you going out and playing until right. I win the dang triangle? Like I was out yes. all day on my bike. You're going, here you, you know, go. Like that, Let me use that. some more like outlandish or extreme scenarios. And then I'll bring it in a more common scenario to try to prove my point. Okay. Imagine that you're a child, Jordan. This has, you have to use your imagination and you're dealing with childhood hunger because your parents do not have the ability to put healthy foods into the fridge in the cabinets every day. That's traumatic. Right. Right. I mean, is this traumatic. is serious aces, adverse childhood experiences. If you do not have food and that's traumatic, I don't know what that feels like. And you don't either, man. I saw, I saw what you grew up, dude. I saw. Well, you actually, when, when, before I met you, when I was, um, like grade school, we would eat pancakes for breakfast cause we had nothing in the house oh, except like flour. Well, pardon eggs. me then. Pardon me. I would go, you know, I would eat at fast food joints. My mom was a single parent. She Dang, went to at night and we, you know what I mean? And we, we would just eat whatever we could. And now my kids are like, I don't like exactly. that. It's not good. You make lasagna. Yeah. That's just, and I'm like, are you right. freaking kidding me? So that is a child. So this is where too. I'm going. And now. All of a sudden that you are that you were that child once who was hungry, who was not eating the free, who had to even go to school to eat the free food. And back then there was actually a stigma right. around that. You felt embarrassed. Some kids felt embarrassed to eat the free food at schools or to have the meal carts or to they go did. through. I was a 100%. I used to bag groceries bag groceries at a huge grocery store. And I would see the parents buying with the single moms using the foods, the food cards and the stamps that I would kind of see yeah. sometimes how emotionally challenging it was for the kids and for the, right. Hard. And then now, now all of a sudden you're yeah. a, you're a, you're a happy, healthy, successful adult and you're a parent. Good job. And you give your kid yeah. this awesome food and your kids are awesome whining <laughs> and you are like, whining. stop it. Stop whining. Stop it. Yes. You know what? You should be ashamed of yourself. That's I work right. so hard. You ungrateful kids, you know, and see, this is what I'm trying to say. You know what? That That's is so a sign of unhealed trauma. You have not, you are making the past in the present. You've got work to right. do. Is that, right. am I stretching too much with this or does that make sense? No. This okay. Let me try another sense. example. And we need, to, we need to somehow, you know, completely er, not erase our memories, but like not have talk it to yourself. Our Why is my kid whining? Moment. Oh, because my kid is a kid and he grows up in a nice middle-class home. Right. But why is it bothering so much? 
Well, you know, you know why it's bothering you. No, I don't. These freaking kids are so selfish and they're such brats. I must be a crappy parent. Nope, you're not a crappy parent. Well, then what is it then? What is it? Yeah. It's freaking kids. It's because, you know, when you see your kids whining about food, it takes you back. No, it doesn't. I didn't whine about food at all growing up. Exactly. 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 Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Because you never had the opportunity to be picky with food. You never had the opportunity to say no thank you to food. And now you see this with your kids and it's hard for you. It's new for you. Oh yeah, it is. But I've had kids, you know, my kids are not younger. They're seven now, right? But you've never dealt with this. What do you mean? You've never dealt with this, this trauma. What do you mean trauma? Well, you didn't have enough food growing up. Yeah, but that wasn't traumatic. Really? <laughs> really? Well, then why you act so weird around your kids when they whine about food? Because that's okay for kids to whine about food. They're kids. Well, that's, that's a good point. See what I did there? Was that helpful? Am I getting weird yeah, now? Yeah, very helpful. No, it makes sense. But it, it's like so many of us don't want to turn that finger and point it back at ourselves. We, we want to point, point at the kids. kids or let's say you were raised by a parent yeah. who's like a military type A parent. And they grinded you in a very negative way to keep things super clean in the house. And they try to tell you like, if you didn't keep things super clean, you were really, you know, going to have a bad future. You were a lazy bones. You, they would scare you into obedience. You know the type of parent I'm talking about? We're talking military, fire, oh, yeah. fighter, police. We're talking about yep. harsh, harshness, right? And they, they totally justify it. Right. And this is normal. It's my job to raise a great kid. All right. Yeah. And then now what is that? Let's say that kid happened and they became afraid of their, their parent. And now that kid now is 30, right. two, has two has kids. Kid. Are right. these kids going to be super clean and tidy? No. No, they're kids. Yeah, the question there is, yeah. do you go the opposite? What are you going to do? Do you go the opposite? Right. And you, are you going to... Yeah, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue that generational trauma? Right. Or are you going to go the right. other extreme and let your kids be total slobs, pushovers? Pushovers. Like, yeah, because you, you want to just right. let them give whatever they so want. So that would be... Right evidence that you maybe you've been traumatized and you're parenting in your trauma if you are living in these extremes doesn't that make sense how about this yeah. story so oh, maybe no. It's, oh no you go go ahead maybe it's maybe it's important for us to think about like okay this is a trigger for me maybe i need to figure out a way to teach my kid mm -hmm. about right what i had or what other right. kids have and what the reality of the world is actually like and get out how of about this bubble. story um last night we were with this lovely family at the mini golf place. Okay. This is, I want to take this very serious because I'm talking about another family right now, a dear, oh. a dear friend okay. that I love. And we were waiting outside the men's room with, uh, two of his sons who are tweens. You with me? And we were yeah. like, Oh, where are the women? And he said, Oh, they're in the women's room. So let's just wait here and let them come out. And I said, okay, let's just wait. But then the, his sons, the two kids, they were, were now waiting and were in the arcade. We're in the arcade, right? And they did not hear this conversation between the dads that we're going to wait by the women's room in the arcade. And there's like no one here in the arcade. It's a huge arcade. You with me? Yep. And then these two sweet young boys, they see our – no, they find hey, our family objects. members. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, they and do. So oh, okay. what do they do? Yeah. They run off to go see them. But we can still see them. They're laying in a straight line. Right? Okay. And so me, I think to myself, my self-talk is, oh, they must see a shiny object. They're going someplace. They're tweens. They're not like two years old. They're not going to get kidnapped. It's all good. I'm not afraid. They're safe. We're in an arcade. You know what I mean? There's no one here. Yeah. Yeah. And my buddy, yeah. he starts cussing and running, yeah, at, at the, the kids, kids and yelling in the, at the top of his effing voice in the arcade, calling them their names, making a scene. Oh, like making a scene. I'll call the kid big scene. Brian, John, John, Ryan, George. George. That don't matter. George, get over here! And he's what the damn it! And it all happened like that. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. I got friends why? like that. Why? <laughs> right. We all have friends tattoo, like that. Same thing. But why? Yeah. Why would yeah. my buddy, who I love so much, why would he go to that level in an arcade when his kids are tweens? They're right there. Right there. They're like 20, 30 yeah. yards away. You know what I mean? And, there's, and then right. he goes over there and he lashes into them when they're just kids. They saw a shiny object. They saw our yeah. family members. They weren't in it's the women's family. room. Right. Only one or two of them was in the living room. But it was my kids who – my kids were out there, my teenage kids. And that's what they were running to. So yeah. what, what are your right. – help me because I can't – what do you see in this story? You didn't ask him? I was going to ask if the family coach actually I didn't, asked man. I don't like – I don't try to psychologize my buddies. Okay. In a, uh, in, okay. a, in a, uh, yeah, in know, a freaking, uh, you know, arcade. But what do you think about that, that story? So he was obviously mad that they didn't listen. Well, this is what the surface is. They didn't listen. They didn't stay put. They didn't stay within the vicinity. They're disrespecting their father because he said. That's all of his self-talk. Do, that's what you're saying. Whether, that's what his self-talk goes to. My yeah, kids. Yeah, correct. My this is on the surface scared. what he's mad. My yes. kids are disobedient. They're disrespectful. They don't listen to me. They're impulsive, selfish Correct. brats. And they don't even care about their, yes. their mother, who, waiting for their mother in the bathroom. And, right. and I have to deal with this but right now. Down, I can't he's... wait to do this calmly. Connection before right. correction? No way. I need to get their attention now. Why? Right. Why do you think right. this man thinks this way and did this? Maybe he's fearful that they would get kidnapped or that right. they would run off right. or get lost. I don't know how big not this place big, is. Man. I mean, when I say big, you know? it's not like that big. It's like, it's not that big. Maybe he's afraid of his wife. Maybe his wife said, Johnny, mm -hmm. where'd you put yeah. little George? You let him Steve. leave your sight. What else? These are good, man. I just want to hear, why um, would he act this way? And this is obviously, this is not a, uh, this is, this is a regular it's a respect issue. Thing. In this person's yes, in this in this it's man's life, issue. but why? The kids are probably, uh, you know, wanting to be independent, um, and he's got it. I think he has on. unhealed trauma, childhood trauma, and trauma from his vocation. I think he's he's a first responder. I don't want to share too many details, and I think he not only has unhealed trauma from his his vocation because first responders they see crazy yeah. stuff. And I, I don't oh think he gosh, has, so many crazy I stuff. think that he's got to go back in time to his childhood and said, why does my, you know, feeling powerless and scared hit me so hard? And what, what do I do about this? And I think he needs professional counseling. Well, I mean, it's his job to keep his kids safe and he sees some rough stuff. And if his kids, something were to happen to his kids, he'd, right. He'd but this is what I'm asking, but that's so. what trauma does to you. Let's now let's argue. I want to part now. And now, now you made me mad. You triggered me because <laughs> what I this do. is the thing. Who is telling this person that an arcade at a mini golf establishment is scary and dangerous it's with dangerous. tween boys? Yeah. Who is telling him that? I think it's his trauma. We're not walking around with gangbangers there with their freaking pants by their knees showing guns. There was barely anyone yeah, in there. Right. It was a family establishment. I don't think it, it's a locate. It's not a location thing. I don't think it's a location thing. I think he would have done the same thing if he was at church. If he was I at agree. A Walmart. He does. He was, I, you know what I mean? I I think right. I think I, it has to do with him thinking no matter I think what. Trauma. It's a this is issue. what trauma does. It speaks to us like it's our, our friend. It tells us lies. It tells us things are scary that aren't scary. It tells us that we are in danger and that other people are in danger and we have to do fight, flight, or freeze to protect ourselves when we are not. I think that is one way of explaining what unhealed trauma sounds like in our heads. Okay, so maybe we as adults come to this realization where we have unhealed trauma. Maybe we're still getting bothered by the kids whining. I think one there's a lot you can do. And is one there, of the things you can do is something you've seen Jordan and I do here on this episode and on a lot of other episodes. Jordan, let's let's give them advice right now. Here's what I here's what here's something that I say to myself. 
<laughs> San Diego. It's two San Diego guys giving parenting advice. That's what we say, man. Dude, Just take a chill dude. pro, little Grom. Calm down, What are you bro. doing, man? Dude, you're acting gnarly out there, dude. You need to go chill out, you know? Right. All right. Watch the waves, put your toes in the sand, bro, and just relax. Here's what I say to myself. Sean, yeah, Sean, you know what? You, uh, when you whined, when you cried as a kid, no one was there for you. And you had to figure this out all on your own. And that's not what you want to do with these, these kids you have. That's not what you want to do. You want to let your kids be feel safe with you. You want to be their person. And so when they whine at you, Remember, this isn't a camping trip. <laughs> this is, this is yeah. even if it is a camping trip, it's okay. You can, you can, they're young kids. You can pack up more than your share. You don't, they're not going to become losers because they're not great packing up a camping trip. Sean, <laughs> Sean, chill out. They're children. They're not you. They're not a six foot grown man, you know, who has a better handle on his emotions, right? Which is ironic. Just, you want to be there for them and you want to give them a safe place so they can share negative emotions with you. So Sean, just show up with love right now. Be loving. What do you think? Do you think over time, if we do that, that that would, the kids would eventually well, stop. Why, why don't my kids? They... Well, obviously we're working through some whining issues with my seven year old, but why some... does my seven year old not whine very much? And why do my kids not whine? Well, because I'm telling you, these tools work. Because why does the husband who wants sex with his wife, why does he not whine when he doesn't get it? Because he trusts. This person's there for me. Trust I have the, the tools. There. I know that she, they're there for me. And I don't need to whine. And it doesn't, you know what I mean? It doesn't work anyway. I don't get what I want when I whine. Because right. If the if the woman were to give have sex with his wife every time he whined, well then of course he would whine, right? Of right. course that doesn't work though. Of course. How many That's women right. are having sex with their husband because right. he's a whiny little biatch, right? He's a whiner. <laughs> That's exactly right. 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 Oh jeez. I like that. All right. So here's self -talk. all right. So let's go. go here's another. Here's, here's another. Here, here's another thing. Trauma. Okay. Why do people whine? It triggers our own selfishness. What are your thoughts on that? Ooh, yeah, we're selfish because we want something mm -hmm. as adults. Yeah, we want, what do we want? We want the Hell kids yeah. to behave. We want the kids to eat their food. Hell yeah. We want the kids to do their dang chores. Make my life easier. Don't that bother me, after camping. kid. Right. That's just so right. selfish. Right. Wait. Do the chores. Clean out my camping stuff and shut up. Right? Right. That's exactly right. I mean, why did we have kids right. to begin with? That's why. Oh no, that's because we. Did if you what think we were about it, about. anytime your kids are whining, you're at, we are all at a fork in the road. Which path do we take? Option one: halt. Yes. H A L T. Why is my kid whining? Well, maybe they're hungry. Maybe they're angry. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they're tired. That's often the case with kids ages Ooh, nine yeah. and under, isn't it? It's one of those reasons, right? Yeah. Halt. Hangry. Ha I mean, hangry. I was gonna say hangry. Put the H and the A together. I would hungry, say seventy-five percent of the time, my kid L? is oh, my seven-year-old's whining because my eight-year-old doesn't whine and my fourteen-year-old doesn't whine. Seventy-five percent of my time, my my kid is whining. It's because in my kids, it's because they're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Halt. Usually, it's tired or hungry. Don't you agree? That's good. What's your What's your numbers for your kids? I agree. Some Understood. kids more than other. It's like part of some kids' nature, say... nurture. What do you say? Your most whiniest kid. What percentage is it that they're just actually hungry or tired? Tired, tired or hungry? I would say sixty-five yeah. to seventy percent. So option two is uh, it. Maybe we can more. we can uh, people please them, give them what they want. What do you think about that option? Does that work for you, dude? dude yeah, there's no, no way work. when that your kids work. whine to you, do you actually cave and give in to no. them? Nah, dude, nah. No. Ain't, ain't nobody time for that. No, I find myself doing it. I'm I not know, gonna I'm lying I do too. find myself kidding. I'm lying. I was lying. I, I do like it sometimes. Do. My wife would be, if my wife was here, be like, Sean, you are so soft with our youngest. You know. <laughs> That's what she right? would say. I'm just lying, <laughs> dude. I have to have put like a yeah, little label on this episode for like explicit right, language because you know of some of the stuff I'm talking about here. <laughs> I might have to, dude. I don't know if I get in trouble if I don't. Or we could react. Next time our kids whine, we can react. Is that What do you think about that option? 
No, because we need to take a chill pill. You already taught us that. How about this? We, we can do what pill. we're going to close up our episode on. And wow, we can do some emotion coaching. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Think of this, everybody. <laughs> our kids are whining because... It. Reframe the Don't way... Don't you cry. Don't reframe you the way you think, think of whining. Crying. This, I think, is going to change your life. Okay. Yeah, and, we, and I, you've done a great job with teaching us that, to reframe. And the fact that we've all, all right. done it. This is what they do. Like, and they're coming to Here's us. Here's what this I want is good. We should watch do. this. Right now, I'm going to... Instead of me just telling you, for the sake of time, I'm going to surprise us all. And Jordan, I'm going to input the audio from my social media video right now. And I'm going to have y'all listen to it. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about it in a second. All right. And put it in now. 10 four. Okay. So Jordan, what I'll do here, let me make a note at nine or 59, 59, 50. One second here. I'm going to play it to you. And I, do you want me to find it? Uh, here, I'll just play it for you. Have it up. Or you can find it. Yeah. And then just, okay. and then uh, give us color commentary. And then we'll start the recording after that. So tell, watch the video and then you tell us what you think about it. And then we'll just wrap up the episode. Okay. Can you hear them in the background? A family talking? Okay. No. No, I'll just... Do you want me to yeah, find it? Or I can just play it for you. I have it ready right here. Yeah, man. Okay, ready? You got it? Okay. Yeah. Here's how to speak identity into a whining or really negative child. First, make sure you don't say, we just be quiet? Just Hold be on. Quiet. Is it um? So is it good video? Like, can you hear it very clearly? Okay, so we'll just play it. Yeah. Here, we'll just play it. Here, ready? Up, like. Here's how to speak identity into a whining or really negative child. First, make sure you don't say, "We just be quiet. Just be quiet. It's so annoying. You're whining all." Just shut up. Like I'm sick of hearing this all the time. There's so much whining. You can't always get what you want in life. You got to get used to it. Suck it up. First, let me tell you something interesting to think about. If you are a good parent, like you love your kids, you care about them, you spend time with them, well then. Hopefully, you're going to be your child's person. Like, you are their person. If you are your child's person, well, first of all, good job. Nice work. And there's a lot of pros and a lot of hard things that come out of this. One of the challenging things is that your child might whine to you. Why do they whine? Well, because you are their person. Think of this. You're like one of the only people in the entire world full of people that will listen to them, that cares about their feelings and kids that are whiners or complainers well they feel a lot of things they feel them very deeply and they're getting them out to the person that loves them that cares about them that can maybe do something about it so instead of reacting or saying stupid stuff or letting stupid stuff come out of your butt or your mouth maybe think about saying something really loving and affirming because remember a parent's words are very powerful. We want to help emotion coach this child. We want to help speak identity into them and help them process what's happening with them, with us, and with anyone else who's listening to this whining. Here's a couple ideas. After you've taken a chill pill and you're in a calm spot, the child's in a calm spot, I want you to know that I love it when you talk to me. You share your feelings with me. Like It means a lot to me. I want you to feel safe. You can come to me on good days, on bad days. I'm always here. And I love that you don't stuff your feelings, that you share them with me. This is a really good quality to have. And I hope you're patient with me because as you probably noticed, like when you are sharing negative things, sometimes it's hard for me. And it's hard when you're saying any negative things or kind of whining, you know? But I'm hoping we can work on this together because I want you to feel free to like share your feelings with me, but that I want us to work on where that line is between like you just sharing your feelings and then you whining. Because when you whine, it, it really like affects me. I think it affects everyone in this house. And part of my job as your parents is to kind of teach you, teach you like how to best share your feelings, 
that there's a time and a place. How to do it in a way where I can really hear you and respond to you. Because whining is just not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for me. It's not good for us. A parent's words are powerful. Use yours wisely. Enjoy my podcast or click that link if you want to go deep. What stands out to you? Thoughts? That's good stuff. All right. So I think um, we all could learn so much from that and, and the way our attitude is as parents to these kids. My next question to you immediately is, is you, you know, let's say we master this. Our, our ultimate goal, obviously, is to have them stop whining because no nope. adult Agree. likes whiners. Yep. You just don't. Society doesn't like whiners. Let's, let's be real. So I love where you're coming from. But ultimately, our reaction is just stop whining because we just yeah. don't want them to do it because we know that's not going to be helpful for them. So is there a fine line here where we're we're not promoting this uh but we're 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 still showing love how is it at that point where we let's focus on that the fine the line because that's what you mentioned and that's what the video kind of highlights so a couple things to think about is first it, a part of your mindfulness when your kids are really negative that's really add this to your self-talk is i am my child's person this is good they're coming okay. to me because they love me right they trust me this is what my kid has always done since they were a baby. And I want to show up for them. Next thing to think about is connection before correction. Some children are so negative or so emotionally deregulated that they can't really get that emotion coaching. They're just in that space and they just want to be negative and they're deregulated. They're not thinking clearly. That's why they really get that eye contact and to really help them to connect with you. Okay help them to get a good breath and to really focus, or you might have to wait an hour or a two hours or five hours or even 24 hours to, to get to the coaching. Remember, teaching moments don't happen in the moment. How am I doing? Should I continue? Okay, the next thing I think this video yes, highlighted please. is shared confusion. The psychology of shared problem solving to evoke that. We have a problem here because I want you to be able to come to me and talk to me and share anything with me. But when you have like a whiny tone to it, it's hard. It's hard for me. I don't hear you as well. And, and invite them into how this creates a problem in the relationship. Do you like that? I like that a lot. That the number one, one brilliant. of the main things that people do with their kids is they say, "Don't, nope, I can't hear that voice. I can't hear that. Which on one Correct. hand, it sounds good. Yep. And I like that tool. I use that tool. My wife and I use that tool. On the other hand, look at the dark side of that tool. That you're teaching your child that for them to get comfort from you, to get your attention, they have to like have their, all their, you know, ducks in a row. They have to have everything regulated. They have right. to, and do you want a relationship with that? Would you like a relationship with that's, your own wife where yeah, you can only right. go to your wife if you're yeah. on your A-gum? So see, right, no, that's like real. that's not what you want. Right. You want – like, that's why you want your kids to feel free. You They can come to you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're not like this freaking drill sergeant where they have to have their old stuff together because if that continues on, well, then, then you know what they're going to do? They're not going to come to you because it's just like, no, I can't get myself yep. regulated. So F you. I'm not going to. Okay. I'll go to somebody who accepts me the way I am, who loves me the way I am. That's deep right there, dude. Okay. So the yeah, next would be then. Is. All right. So. I cannot understand you. So then, yeah, the emotion coaching like part is that's, like, that's look, good. there's this line. And then we want to teach our kids about the line. And when they're age three, it's different when the line is six, different when they're nine. It's different when they're 14 and 15, isn't it? Okay. And every family is different. Every line okay. is different. For me, my tolerance for whining and negativity is much higher than my wife's. I just think that that's how I feel. And sometimes she feels like I'm being more passive okay. or being more like people pleasing. Or I just think I'm being more patient. I just, it doesn't bother me as much, the whining or the negativity. And that's okay because no, like co-parents are going to have the same exact line, are they? And that's okay. And how do you right. coach them that this is my line yeah. and you know, mom's line is different. Do you, what do you think about that tool? I think it, and a great example is that is when the kid comes to mommy and says, mommy, can I have ice cream? You say no. And then the kid comes to daddy. Daddy, can I yeah. have ice cream? Daddy says yes. And it's like, oh, well, daddy said I could have ice cream. Well, wait, mommy said no. It's too close to bedtime. So that line. So lastly, exactly what you're doing here is you're working with your child to co-create a win-win based on trust. So they can trust you that they can come to the, you. you can trust it doesn't have me. to be perfect, but you can trust them to kind of know where that line is and to keep working on it 
and to know how it really, this whining really affects you, your feelings, your vibe, and her first relationship. And to help them process that, even at the young age of four. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's a lot of internal. Um, Dude, this whole this whole episode us, has been more about how we talk to ourselves <laughs> than how we talk to our kids. We went deep with right. this episode, man. Yeah, we did. And you know, if we just go to like what what we're thankful for, like I'm thankful for the first mm. tip that got us into this big yeah. spiral down that we've been going yeah. down, and it's that chill pill. It's that like. That California lifestyle, like, <laughs> chill out, bro. Like, we could all do that. Yeah. We could all just, like, take yeah. a breath, smell the roses. Use I'm whatever term you want. As we end our episode on my attitude of gratitude is I'm thankful that I have a wife and three kids, and I think I'm their person. I think they have other people, too, but I think I'm, I want to be, be their person. And they come to me in the good and the bad and the ugly, and I, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to sabotage that beautiful blessing of being my child's person. 